All right, this video is about inside out turning. And I've watched hundreds of videos on inside out turning. Some of them get kind of complicated and I get tired of watching them. This is about doing multiple inside out turnings, Christmas ornaments or whatever. Uh, speed and set up and being organized is everything. I worked as a professional cabinet maker for 42 years. This is my hobby. This is not my job. I do sell some of this stuff, but I kind of transitioned some of what I learned about production into this. The number one thing on this whole system is that all your pieces have to be exactly the same size. This will not work. Uh, planer works great. You do a really good job on table saw. That's fine too. You got a good table saw, that'll work. Uh, my experience, and it's a little bit, you do not have to sand all these pieces to glue them together. Sometimes it even stops it from bonding because the, the pores of the wood are not open to accept the glue. So you can do this whole thing to the table saw. Start off with good square material, make sure it's all exactly the same. If you're gonna duplicate, you can do three or four different sizes the same way as we're gonna do this one size. You can change up. You can do a three inch by three inch or an inch and a half by an inch and a half, whatever. Look at your supply of lumber, see what you've got to cut it out of. Go around the shop, pick up scrap. I hoard scraps all the time and they're used to make these. This is, this has been through this process. Of course, it's not a finished product. I still like uh, turning it outside. We may not do all the turning in this video, but we're gonna certainly cover the jigs and what they're for and how to make pork food. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna make a jig for this to go in. Pretty fancy, huh? You don't have to make this look fancy because your product's gonna pick for itself. This is gonna be the only time I'm gonna use tape. Most of the inside out, People, they tape their squares together and put them in there, lay there with how they want to put them in there, and uh, that didn't work too good for me. They fly apart. Some people hot glue them together to do the inside. Some people uh, use brown paper and glue to glue them together. I'm going to eliminate every bit of that here today, and you're going to cut the time. Even in making the jig, it's still not gonna take you as long to do this as it would doing that. So, here's our jig. Probably don't have to show anybody how to get the center. Just corner to corner. Center up there. Mark that. I'm gonna drill us a little hole, a little pile of hole right through the center. Put screw in it in a minute. We're not going to be using tape to turn this, but to get our jig lined up the first time, I'm going to tape these. It holds them in a reference point. And by the way, in turning and taping this stuff, which I didn't use painter's tape, I used reinforced tape. I probably lost more of these than I kept on the lathe. So, I wanted to figure out a better way, and like I say, with my background in production, it just hit me. And I'm not knocking any of the wood turners out, out there on YouTube because they have helped me tremendously. I've been turning for 42 years, but I certainly can teach an old dog new tricks. Okay, we've got our reference hole, which is in the center. So we're just going to match that up with that. Well, would you believe the screw is in the tip, ready for the production. And by the way, this is my first video. I've been wanting to do this for a while. 
and with the help of my wife, and she's going to do the technical parts because I'm not good at that. A carpenter and the woodwork. And I'll say this is not about the turning part, because, and this is just scrap. I mean, that's all it's got to be. Okay, what we're going to do, I've got some scraps cut here, just something left over. And we're going to nail that flat up against. Okay. Wouldn't be a bad idea to glue it, I usually don't. But, keep your nails close, because you're gonna, when you stick this in the lathe, you're actually going to turn it, and you'll turn it around like that way. So you want the, want the nails out of the way. Can you just come around? even size any of these. The last one I'll have to cut to fit in between. I'll probably whack some of this off a bandsaw before I take it to glaze. And the only requirement is that this needs to be really tight to hold it close. And that's why I was telling you all the pieces needed to be the same. That's why because this is going to fit in there and we're going to be taking this in and out every time we change pieces. That's a jig. Take the screw out. Take it out of the jig. I say I'm gonna rough that out with a bandsaw, and when I get it on the lathe, I cut it again. Okay. Now, here's what I show you. This is just for setting up. Of course, this has got to be cut to length. Put them all good, cut them to length. Press them down in there, and you've got them captured. Okay. Now, if you have a chuck, I'm gonna show you in a minute. This is complete. If you don't have a chuck, all you do is do another one of these, put it on the other end, put it between centers, and you can turn it. I've got one set made now that's for bigger ones, that these won't fit in my chuck. The chuck guys will not be enough. So I have taken and made one of these and put me a spigot on the end, and it goes in my chuck, and then the pieces will go in it. I'm going to pause just for a minute, and I'm going to cut this a little bit around on the bandsaw. As you see, I didn't even draw anything on there. What I'm going to do, when I get it on the lathe, I'm going to put this in there, and I'm going to put it in my chuck. And because it's a new G, and you don't even have to do it, it makes it look a little better. I'm going to round this up a little bit, just for me. So, uh... I'm going to stop for a minute, I'm going to set this up, and we'll go to the lab. Like I say, if you don't have a chuck, I recommend you get one, but if you don't have one, you can just make another one of these. And what you're going to do, you're going to line it up in your jaw of your chuck, right there. I'm not going to tie it tight. I'm going to move our tail stock up a little bit. Our screw hole is our reference point. That is our center. So all you gotta do, pull your tailstock in that screw hole, and you are in the center of the piece. Tighten it up real tight against the headstock. Lock it down. Lock it down really tight. Now you're set up to turn inside. Now there is a lot of different designs. And I've tried some that worked, and I've tried some that blew up, and I cut them in two or whatever, but that's going to be a matter of, and I highly recommend you looking at some inside-out turnings on, on uh, YouTube because they're really helpful. That's what got me started. I was just looking for a better way. So the one thing I always emphasize on lay is safety because these things can hurt you because they're revolving very fast. Okay. 
first line check your clearance. And actually I made this toolbar here because I didn't like the one I had. So we've got everything captured and uh, I'm going to knock this off a little bit, no big deal. Uh, you can watch or you can fast forward. Number one thing, face shield. Safety glasses do not do it because sometimes you have very large pieces coming off the way. Uh, I'm going to do, do some tutorials on uh, sharpening later, not in this video. If you can't sharpen, you can't turn unless you use carbide tools. And you can use carbide tools. It's not a big deal. And I'm not going to go through a whole lot of design or anything here. I'm just going to try to show you how to get started. Later videos, we will be showing some of that. selling the jeep uh if you want to buy one i'll sell you one but I, as you saw a while ago anybody that does any kind of woodworking can make it i'm gonna move my tool rest a little more a little better support and remember you're supposed to be a little bit below center like i say I, a lot of times i just Can. It just works so much better for it to be turning fast. Now you have the basis for your inside out turning. You've got the inside turned. Uh, we take more time, we could do finish on it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you because when you get it when you get it in there and get it turned around, it's really hard to finish. Even even making this G to do one piece is faster than any other way I've ever seen it done. And another, another thing, I see people marking all this to turn it around. I almost never mark it. Uh, one thing I do do, I take these to the sander and I knock these birds off flat up against my bait sander to keep it from holding it off so I have, won't have a blue line there. Okay, we're going to stop there. I'm going to go sand this. You don't have to watch me sand it. And then I'm going to show you how I clamp it all together. Okay, this is what we turned a little minute ago. By the way, this is walnut and poplar. I always use uh, different colored woods. It just adds to it. This is purple heart and maple. Uh, like I say, I pick up scraps in the shop. I build something I have left over. So uh, the only thing you know, I can see about marking these is maybe you don't have to figure it out when you do this, and I always just do it anyway. Get a little over, see? So we're going to set it up like that, so when we start putting the glue on, we will get the glue where it needs to be, and sometimes I don't, so I have to watch that. Not a big deal, because you're going to turn it away anyway. So I've got my walnut and my poplar all set, every other one. Okay. Here's another, and I probably got this from YouTube. Here's another thing that really speeds you up, this gluing process for the final glue. Uh, I, I do some segmented bowls and things, odd shapes. I use the same gluing process, and uh, this is a 
This is a really expensive, hard to use clamp. It's called a hose clamp. It's round, but it will get kind of square. And I've seen people make little pieces to go around it to make it square. Uh, I just put it on there, tighten it up, pull it together. They don't have a problem with it. Uh, put those two together. Those two together. And we can glue the whole thing. And, and I did sand this a little bit, but I just sanded to knock some of the burrs off that I created while I was turning. And like I say, open poured wood glues better. I know this from joinery and cabinet shop. Uh, we have run a large cabinet shop for many, many years. Fabricated granite, fabricated quartz. Take your hose clamp. I've already got these ready and they've always they've already been used several times. Just take a nut driver. I always tighten up one of them and I kind of look at where my joints go. Because every once in a while I get them a little offset and those are not offset. They're in good shape. So we're gonna put our other hose clamp on. You notice I didn't do a whole lot of this off camera. And this is a very short video, and we have a turning ready to put on the lathe and turn. I don't know if I'll come back. I'll probably come back and turn this one. This, I usually, they say six or seven hours. I usually set these overnight. If you're making a lot of these, which I do, uh, just go buy you these cheap posts and have a bunch of them. And then that jig's the only thing else you need. And like I say, as far as the jig, any size you want to do, if you have a lot of scrap, uh, three quarter by three quarter, most of us do, you just take that. Very important, every one of them has to be exactly the same size so they fit in this jig. Now, go back again, you saw me set it up in a chuck. If you have a chuck, it's very easy. If you don't have a chuck, you can turn two of these, and I've got one set in there. Uh, you can turn two of these, and you you can turn it between centers just as good. I, I like to use my chucks. I'll be right back, and I'll show you another jig that I made. Okay, this is uh, made for some... I had some eight-quarter stock and the scraps out of it. I wanted to turn it. Uh, it, it. It's too big to fit in the biggest chuck I had. So... This is, I made this one for the tailstock, same, same exact process right here. I made this for the tailstock. Uh, I could have turned it between centers, but I like turning on the chuck. So all I did is I made me another one just like this. I used my center holes through the center with a screw to line those up. I think I actually even screwed it to it. Uh, this was turned in my chuck, the size of my chuck, cut it off glued it and screwed it to this and there you have in your chuck and it's in your tailstock for a bigger piece and like I said, it's quite what kind of scraps you, you've got or you may you may get into big production and then some buying lumber and I do a little most of my house saws but you can make these so easy and it saves an unbelievable time I'm not knocking any other wood turners that turn inside out pieces on YouTube. Go watch some of them. Their designs are fabulous. Uh, probably better than any of mine. I'm going to show you a few, uh, in, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you some few finished pieces. The only thing you have to watch when you're turning this is if you get too deep. Most of the time, you're going to try to, you're going to try to follow this design. Or we've got a teardrop design right here. We're going to follow that design. I see people mark it. It's probably a good idea. I don't. I just fly by the seat of my pants and, and uh, start turning it. Turn the lathe off. Look at it. You can make finials on the bottom. Uh, this is the short piece, and that's what I maybe I always do. The short piece from the top, you turn it kind of blunt at the end, and you, we hot glue 
a piece of wire down through here to make our hanging ornament to hang up, and we'll show you that later. All right, if you like this video, do me a favor. This is my first YouTube video. If you like it, hit the like button and hit subscribe. Uh, I, need a, I need a bunch of subscribers. I think we're gonna have some good videos from this. I've got uh, a good little bit of experience. I'm not saying I'm the best out there because I'm certainly not. We do bowls, we do vases, we do epoxy bowls. Uh, we do a lot of crazy stuff. So here's some of our finished products. And uh, these here, I'm really proud of. Uh, this heart shape in the center is probably the hardest inside out I've done. And it took me a while and I threw away a bunch of these and you'll probably throw away some. Uh, I'll show you one day on one of my videos how to make a cross. That bothered me for a long time. I'd see these and I'm like, you can't do that on a lathe. Well, you do most of it on a lathe that I can show you how. I was telling you about the different jigs. The big jig I was showing you, that is Bodoc, also known as Osage Orange and Walnut. That's a rather large inside out. And that's the one I made that special uh, uh, or bigger jig for that I had that I could chuck down in my life. This is, and this is my wife's idea, this is pin blanks that you buy. And that's four pin blanks put, blanks put together. And then I turn a cherry finial on the bottom because they're not very big. And then I turn a cherry top on. So if you like this, subscribe. We would really appreciate it. Uh, this is a hobby, but one of these days, maybe I'll retire and I'll make a little money off from it. Thanks. Y'all have a blessed day.